Hi everyone! Welcome to the beginning of chapter 3 where we're going to be getting into the rectangular coordinate system. So, do you remember what the rectangular coordinate system is? Probably not, but I'm sure this image will be a nice refresher for you. So, here is your rectangular coordinate system. Remember, you have an x and a y axis. The top quadrant up here is quadrant 1, where both your x and your y values are positive. And then you circle counterclockwise to quadrant 2, where your x becomes negative and your y becomes positive. And then down to quadrant 3, where everything is negative. And then over to quadrant 4, where it's positive and negative. So, now what we're going to be asked to do is, let's see, let's put me down here, find ordered pairs that would satisfy a given equation. So here we have an equation 2x plus 3y equals 6. Remember your ordered pair is of the form x comma y, right? So let's go ahead and find some ordered pairs. Me personally, I like to organize my information into an xy table. So if I were to plug in, let's say, negative 1 for x, let's do that math, 2 times negative 1 plus 3y equals 6, negative 2 plus 3y equals 6, 3y is equal to 8, y is equal to 8 thirds. Not so nice, but it's still an ordered pair. So one of my answers could be negative 1 and 8 thirds. What if we chose 0? 2 times 0 plus 3y is equal to 6. So 3y is equal to 6. y is equal to 2. So there's another ordered pair, 0, 2. I could do it in reverse. What if my y was 8? What would x be? Well, we would do 2x plus 3 times 8 equals 6. 2x plus, uh, I'm going to do that, 24 is equal to 6. Subtracting 24 gets us 18. Dividing it out gets us 9. So 9, 8 would be an ordered pair. All right, so we should be able to work on either side of that table of values and plug in either the x or the y and solve for the other variable. All right, so here, if we had to use the same equation and find the unknown y when x is equal to negative 3, we would do 2 times negative 3 plus 3y equals 6. So negative 6 plus 3y is equal to 6. 3y is equal to 12 y is equal to 4, so your answer should be 4. Okay, I'm going to have you try one on your own. Let's do, I'm going to cross this off. Let's do the ordered pair of 5, comma, blank. What would you get in that blank? Did you get negative four-thirds. Hopefully you did. So 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 3y equals 6. Subtracting your 10 gets you negative 4. Dividing gets you negative four-thirds. So it would be the ordered pair 5, negative four-thirds. Good. What if we needed to find the x given a y? Well, then we just plug it into the y. So 2x plus 3 times negative 4 equals 6. 2x minus 12 equals 6. 2x equals 18. x is equal to 9. You good there? All right, so let's have you try one on your own. How about given a y of 8, solve for x. So hopefully you would have gotten, so 6 minus 24, negative 9. So 2x plus 3 times 8 equals 6. 
2x plus 24 equals 6. 2x equals negative 18, so x is equal to negative 9 is what you should have gotten there. Good. All right, so now let's go to different ways that we should be able to graph lines. And this is what we're going to be working on for the first part of Chapter 3. Um, so the first way is to make a table of values. And then plot your points. Okay, that's the most basic, probably the first way that you learn to graph a line. A second way would be to find your intercepts. So find your x and y intercepts. And that works nicely when your equation is in standard form. Do you remember what standard form looks like? That's where you have both your x and your y terms on the same side and your constant all by itself. So that lends itself to finding x and y intercepts pretty nicely. Uh, slope intercept form. It's probably what everyone is familiar with. y equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b, which we'll get to that a little bit later. And then point slope form. Point slope form. My handwriting's getting worse. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So those are the four different ways that you can graph a line. Um, we just went through how to make a table. Hopefully you would be able to then plot those points on a coordinate grid if you needed to. Uh, so now let's go get into x and y intercepts. So if you guys remember doing x and y intercepts back in Algebra 1, back in Algebra 2, maybe your teacher called it the cover-up method. Um, but let's think about really quickly what are x and y intercepts. Well, an x-intercept, yes, there we go is when the line crosses over the x-axis. So that's going to be some number, I'm going to put c there, comma, 0, because your y is going to be 0. Like if this was 1, then my x-intercept would be 1, 0. y-intercepts are when your x is 0 and your y-coordinate is some number, okay? So when you're finding your x-intercept, we're going to make our y be 0. And when we're finding our y-intercept, we're going to make our x be 0. So now let's go ahead and do that into practice. So here's my equation. 4x minus, 3, or minus y equals negative 3. If I wanted to find my x-intercept first... I'm going to let my y equal 0, which is going to make everything go away next to the y. So 4x minus 0 is equal to negative 3, lends itself to 4x equals negative 3, dividing by 4 gets you negative 3 fourths. I want you to write your x-intercepts and your y-intercepts as ordered pairs. Please make sure you do that. So our final answer would be, and I don't know where my face is right now, hopefully it's not over this, uh, negative three-fourths, comma, zero. Or if you remember the good old cover-up method, you would just cover up the y, right, and solve for x, divide by four. Okay, so now let's find the y-intercept. When we find our y-intercept, we're going to let x equal zero. So getting rid of the x term lends us to the equation negative y equals negative 3. Dividing out the negative gets us y equals positive 3. Again, write your answer as an ordered pair. So x was 0, y is 3. So there would be your x, x, and then your y intercept. Okay? All right, I'm going to have you try one on your own. I want you to find the x and y intercepts of, I'll make it an easy, nice one, 2x plus 6y equals 18. 
did you get your y-intercept to be 0, 3? And did you get your x-intercept to be 9, 0? Hopefully you did. All right. Oh, we didn't graph it. I forgot to graph that last one. Let's go back over our x-intercepts again. We had totally lost the whole graphing part. Back to that last example. Our x-intercept was at making that so negative four-thirds or three-fourths comma zero. Does that sound about right? And then this was zero, three. So if I had to graph my x and y intercept, there we go, putting a dot at 0, 3, putting a dot at negative 3 fourths 0, I don't know, right about there, I would say, and then connect. There would be your graph. Good. Let's so make sure that you then plot those as x and y intercepts, please. Okay. Next, we have point-slope form. So remember, point-slope form as, is of the form y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So really, all we need to know to graph a line is just a point and then a slope from that point. So your point is going to come from the number located here and the number located here. So in our example, we have y minus 4 equals negative 2 times x plus 3. So my coordinate, or my point, has an x of, now be careful, this is really the same as minus a negative 3. So really my x coordinate is negative 3, not positive 3. And my y coordinate is 4. My slope is negative 2. So now if I had to graph that... We would start at my point, which we said was negative 3, 4. So negative 3, 4 puts us right here. And then from that point, I guess it's over a little bit. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. So I guess it should be down a little bit. There we go. Good enough. We're going to go down 2, because remember your slope is rise over run. So down 1, 2, run 1 would put us at negative 2, positive 2, and then connect. I guess I could do that again, going down 1, 2, over 1, I guess would put me at, yeah, something like that, right? 4, down 2, over 1, down 2, over 1, technically, I guess should put me over here. That wasn't a very good line. There we go. All right. Sounds good. How about you try one on your own? Given the equation y plus 1 equals 3 times x minus 4, can you graph it? Hopefully and I can't make a multiple choice out of this, you went to the point 4, negative 1, and then did a slope of 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, and then from there go down 1, 2, 3, over 1. Two, excuse me, I sneeze. 1, 2, 3, over 1. There we go. There's the graph of our line. All righty. Now let's talk about vertical and horizontal lines really quickly before we're going to actually move on to section 3.2 in this lesson too and just get in some slope formula. So remember vertical lines are lines that go straight up and down. Your equation of vertical lines is going to be x equals some number. So in this case, it's x equals negative 2. Remember that your slope is going to be undefined on a vertical line. Not no slope, because that would be flat. This is undefined slope. And a horizontal line is the equation y equals some number. In this case, it's y equals negative 2. And your slope is going to be 0 
when we have a flat line like that. Okay, so if I had to graph the line y equals 2, I would, on my y-axis, find 2, go straight across. And I, if I had to graph the line y, x equals 4 on my x-axis, I would find 4 and make a vertical line going straight through. Okay, so make sure you can do horizontal and vertical lines. They're so easy that you'll probably mess them up. Okay, so now let's get into... Oh, hold on, I missed this part. Here we have a quick equation quick equation of x plus 2y equals 0. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do this one is because if we try to find the x and y intercepts, what happens? Notice your intercepts both just are 0, 0. So you only have one intercept because the x and y axis intercept are exactly the same. So now what do we have to do? Well, we can either make a table of values and set up our ordered pair. Or, do you guys remember your y equals mx plus b form? If I solve this equation for y, I get 2y equals negative x plus 0. Dividing by 2 gets us y equals negative 1 half x plus 0. So my slope's telling me to go down 1 over 2, or I can go backwards and go up 1 to the left 2. And there would be our line. Okay, so just because your x and y intercepts are both 0, you still might have a slope there. You just have to solve for it to get your y by itself. Okay, so that concludes section 3.1. We are actually also going to move into section 3.2, which just talks about slopes specifically of lines. Um, and I feel like this isn't too crazy of a thing to put on you. You should be able to handle talking about slopes of lines along with graphing lines. Uh, since this should all be review for you guys. And we got to keep moving. All right, so remember your slope formula. You might have seen in your science classes that delta symbol, delta y over delta x, is this, the symbol for change in y over your change in x. So what is it? Well, it's y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 otherwise known as rise over your run. So that formula should not be new to you. Um, and that's where your point slope form actually comes from. So if I had to find the slope between two points, could you do it? So slope, change in y over change of x. So change in my y's would be negative, or 3 minus negative 1 over negative 5 minus 2. So 4 over negative 7, negative 4 sevenths. Yeah. Try this one on your own. Do negative 1, 6, and 7, 8. Did you get a slope of 8 minus 6? So 2, 7 minus negative 1 would be 8, 1 fourth. Hopefully you did. What if we had, uh, let's do this quickly before we go there. What if we had the two points of negative 3, 5 and negative 3, 6? Well, now my slope's going to be 6 minus 5, which is 1, but negative 3 minus negative 3 is 0. Can we have 0 in the denominator? No. So we call that undefined slope. You can use that symbol for undefined if you want to which is our no solution. If I swapped that and made it 5, negative 3, and 6, negative 3, now the change in my y is 0 over 1, which is 0. You can have 0 in the numerator as long as you have another number in the denominator. Okay, so just be aware of those. If you have the same x value, you're going to have an undefined slope. Because if you think about it, same x value is going to be a straight up and down line. If you have the same, same y value, it's going to be a flat line because it's just going across the whole way on the y coordinate. Um, so that would have be a zero slope. Okay, can you find the slope of the line when it's written in standard form? So how can we do that? We're not even going to worry about two different ways. We're in, we're in coronavirus terms now. Let's just find the slope. How do you find the slope? 
I would solve that for y. So 4x minus y equals negative 8. Uh, what would you do next? I would move this y over, because then it would become a positive if I add it over. So now we have 4x equals negative 8 plus y. Add your 8 over. Gets us 4x plus 8 equals y. And remember, y equals mx plus b. My m is my slope. So my slope is going to be 4 in this problem. Find the slope of this equation. Let me make up one for you to do. Let's do 3x plus 5y equals 6. Did your slope come out to be negative 3 fifths? If not, hopefully you subtracted your 3x over to get negative 3x plus 6, and then divide everything by 5. So right there's your slope, negative 3 over 5. Good. All right, what would be the slope of the line y equals 2? We just went over this. y equals 2, horizontal line, flat line, so my slope is 0. B, x plus 1 equals 0, is x equals negative 1, so that's a straight up and down line. So here we would have undefined slope, or you can use that no solution symbol if you want to be lazy. Good. All right, now, can we graph a line when we're given a slope and a y-intercept? Hopefully. So if my slope needs to have, a, or if my line needs to have a slope of two thirds and the y intercept of neg, 0, negative 4, I'm going to plot the point 0, negative 4. And then from there, we're going to go up 2 and we're going to run 3. Go up 1, 2, run 3. My scale is not very good. That's why my line's not very straight. We'll go with that. Okay, so make sure you can graph a line given slope and a y-intercept. Can you graph a line that passes through a point and has a specific slope? Hopefully. So let's plot the point 3, 1. From there, can you do a slope of negative 4, which would be negative 4 over 1. So go down 1, 2, 3, 4. To the right, 1. Gets us that graph. I could go backwards and go up one, two, three, four to the left one. Let's see how I did. Yeah, I might have hit at that point. Not too bad. Did better on that one with my scales. All right, so we're good with that. So we can graph a line given a point and a slope. Hopefully we can graph a line given a slope and a y-intercept. Hopefully we can find the slope of horizontal and vertical lines. Hopefully we can find the slope of a line written in standard form by solving it out for y. And hopefully we can find the slope between two points. If not, go back and revisit those problems. So then the last thing we have to cover is average rate of change, which is just in word problems, which is just your slope. You're just going to be finding the slope. Okay, so take a moment to write this word problem down. I'm going to go ahead and get started by reading it, assuming that you did pause it. It says the graph in the figure approximates the average number of hours per year spent watching cable and satellite TV for each person in the U.S. During the years through 2000 through 2004, find the average rate of change in number of hours per year. So per year. We have an ordered pair at 2000, right? So right here. 2,769 hours per person. Uh, I, I, well, probably much higher than that, huh? And then we have another labeled ordered pair here at 2,004, which was 868 hours per person. So using those two ordered pairs, can we find the slope? I hope so. Change in Y, so 868 minus 769 over change in x, 2004 minus 2000. So 868 minus 769 is 99. 2004 minus 2000 is 4. Divide that by 4. Gets us 24.75 
hours per every year. So every year it's increasing by about 24.75 hours is what this graph is telling us. Okay, so that's the increase. So for every year it increases, hours increase by 24.75. All right, last one, and then we'll be done. During the year 2000, the average person in the U.S. spent 866 hours watching TV. In 2013, the average number of hours per person spent watching TV was 176, 1,660, 1,768 hours, Blah, if I could talk. Find the average rate of change in the number of hours per year. So now we don't have them written as ordered pairs, but can you write that as an ordered pair? So in 2000, it was 866. In 2013, it's 1,768. So now let's find the slope with that. So 1,768 minus 866 all over 2013 minus 2,000. So subtracting that gets us 900 over 13. So this average rate of change is 69.23 hours per year, right? So always add context to your answers when you're doing word problems like this to make it sense. Make it make sense. Don't just say 69.23 hours. It's hours per year, okay? All right, so that concludes your 3132 notes. I hope it wasn't too crazy condensing them together. Go ahead and move on to your next assignment.